Hello. <clears throat> Good evening, one and all present here in this virtual Google meeting room. This is our fourth webinar under Environment and Development Series 2. We plan on organizing 10 webinars under this series. Botany Department, Sheva Bharati Mahavidyalaya, Jharkram, Kapgadi, West Bengal, Botany Department, Government General Degree College, Lalgar, Jharagram, and Drishtikon Organization are the collaborative organizers of these webinars. I am Pompey Ghosh, Head Department of Botany, Sheva Bharati Mahavidyalaya, is really thankful to the resource persons, all distinguished participants, students, and researchers for their joyful participation in these webinars. This is the platform we prepared for all to share their knowledge. Every Saturday, I wait for listening new topic either on environment and development or biodiversity conservation. Everyone has knowledge of their own sphere, while all are not. So this is the platform of sharing knowledge. All are welcome to this webinar on plant tissue culture, a way of plant propagation. Today's resource person is Dr. Deepu Shamanto. I would like to hand over the next session to Dr. Devaprato Dash, head of the department and as associate professor, GGDC Lalgor, for introducing today's resource person. So, Dr. Dash. Thank you, madam. Good day, resource person. Sorry. Today's resource person is Dr. Deepu Samanto, faculty, SEC, Department of Botany, Dr. Tanailal Bhattacharya College, Howrah. Madam, did her MSc in Botany from Calcutta University with plant sale and tissue culture as special paper. She worked at Plant Biotechnology Laboratory at Calcutta University under the guidance of Professor Sandeep Mukhobhaddai uh, and did a PhD in the year 20, 2018. Her special interest on chromosome analysis, cytophotometric analysis, biochemical and molecular study. She did many publications and joint papers, also participated in many national and international journals, seminars, and online conferences. She is a good reviewer in research journals and 
reviewed many scientific papers. She is writing many books, chapters. Now she is before the audience. Uh, so I request you, Dr. Samanto, please uh, proceed. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Dash. Good evening, Pompey Madam, and uh, all the participants and uh, everyone. Okay, today I am myself, Dr. Deepu Shamantu. Today I am here to present my some of my research work. Uh, before going to start, I would like to share my presentation. Is this visible? Yes. Yes. Okay, ma'am. I think uh, my slides is visible to you. Okay. No, slide is not visible. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Just I am trying. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, now it is this visible? No, it is visible. Go okay. to slide mode. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Fine. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, I, uh, I am going to start my today's presentation. That is, uh, the title of my today's presentation is Plant Cell and Tissue Culture, a Way of Plant Propagation. It is a very basic uh, lecture uh, on the plant tissue culture. Okay. So, now. Uh, as we all know, plants can be propagated by sexual method, either through um, the generation of seeds or the asexual method, that is through the multiplication of vegetative parts. Okay. Um, asexual reproduction through multiplication of vegetative parts is the only method for the in vivo propagation of certain plants as they do not produce viral seeds like banana, grapes and chrysanthemum. The plant tissue culture is a collection of techniques used to maintain or grow plant cells, tissues, or organs under sterile conditions on a culture media. Okay. So, uh, this is the pho photograph for uh, general uh, stem cutting, and this is the photograph that is, uh, as we all know, this is our conventional idea that within fruits, seeds are present, uh, seeds are germinated to form the plantlet. Plantlet, uh, uh, after uh, maturation and growth, it forms a mature plant. From within the mature plant, again, where flowers are developed from the flowers, uh, fruits are developed. This is our conventional idea about either uh, in uh, stem cutting or the uh, sexual reproduction. I will today talk on a new method, uh, uh, another method of in vitro grown of plant. Uh, so now coming to the uh, in vitro uh, culture. Before going to start the in vitro culture, one thing we have to know that uh, one term we are using that is explant. So the meaning of explant is the starting material for micropropagation or any culture. The choice of uh, explant is a very important thing. The explant should be taken from actively growing mother plant. The size of the explant is maintained uh, one or two centimeters. Okay, there are several uh, explant we can use that is should deep uh, apical maize stem, uh, uh, axillary maize stem, leaf node, internode, uh, etc., protoplast or anther pollen, etc., etc. Uh, but on of which uh, we mostly use uh, shoot leaves, internode leaves, etc. Uh, that depends upon the uh, your work and the choice of my experiment. Okay. So these are the several uh, pictorial representation of our explant. Now, uh, one thing we know that uh, out of different uh, explant, if we are using the apical maize stem, this is a very good uh, explant for virus free culture. Now, coming to the um, uh, points that uh, five apical stems with low concentration of viruses. Okay. 
activity uh, because absence of vascular tissue in the meristem through which viruses rapidly move in the plant body rapidly dividing meristematic cells with high metabolic activity do not allow viruses to multiply. Another thing is the uh, viruses re virus replication is inhibited by a high concentration of uh, endogenous auxin present in the shoot epithelium. Uh, plant tissue culture techniques employing meristem tip or meristem culture are successfully used for the production of disease-free plants. Now, um, as we have uh, so many conventional methods of propagation, uh, then why we choose tissue culture? There are several, several requirements for uh, choosing the uh, tissue culture because uh, sometimes short or less viability of seed, progressive increase in demand and unorganized harvesting lead the reduction of some important plants. The loss of plant genetic resource has made necessary development for exit conservation also, limitation of traditional farming, the production of exact copies of plant to, um, for uh, quickly production of plants also, the production of multiple copies of plant in absence of seed dormancy or sometimes in absence of necessary pollinators to produce a viable seed. Uh, another thing is the, uh, the regeneration of whole plants from plant cells that have been genetically modified. For genetically modified crop production, tissue cancer is very important thing. And the production of plants in sterile containers that allow them uh, to be moved with, uh, with greatly reduced chances of transmitting different diseases like diseases based on pathogens. Uh, and another thing is the uh, production of plants from seeds that otherwise have very low chances of germinating and growing. So these are the reasons for choosing the uh, tissue culture. So we can call it that um, in vitro regeneration can be an alternative method for propagation and conservation of germplasm. Now coming to the in general application of uh, plant cell and tissue culture. Plant uh, tissue culture is used widely in the plant science, forestry and horticulture. The commercial production of plants uh, used as potting uh, landscape and floristic subject which uh, uses medicine and shoot culture to produce large number of identical individuals. Uh, to conserve rare and uh, endangered plant species, plant cell and tissue culture have a very important role. For large, uh, large scale production of uh, different uh, secondary metabolites and recombinant proteins uh, that are used as biopharmaceuticals, plant tissue culture has a very good role. Because we have seen that in case of menthol, rosmaric acid production, in case of bacopa, in case of centella aseticus, so there are several types in times increases the secondary metabolites um, under the tissue culture or in vitro condition. To cross distantly related species by proteinous fusion and regeneration from, of the novel hybrid. Large scale production of artificial seeds through somatic emergencies is also a very important aspect for uh, tissue culture. Now, uh, in plant cell and tissue culture, one uh, term we, we are uh, using very much and it is very important uh, for plant cell and tissue culture that is tissue culture media. Okay. There are several media. Uh, in general, I mostly prefer to use MS media, that is Mura C.K. and Spruce 1962. Uh, sometimes there are a little bit modifications is required. Uh, I will uh, discuss that. So, in general, there are minerals, sugar, some uh, organic growth factors, growth regulator, gelling agent, uh, and other additives are there. In the next slide, I will uh, told you one uh, table that is here, uh, and that I have presented one uh, MS basal media composition that contains macros, uh, nutrients, micronutrients, some on, uh, organic nutrients uh, are also there. Um, now, uh, pH should be maintained uh, as per 5.7 to 5.8 as per requirement of our uh, choice of interest of our experiment. Okay. And now, sometimes we prefer liquid media, sometimes we prefer to use the solid media. Okay. Whenever solidification is required, 0.25% gel rate I mostly use. Sometimes uh, some another uh, authors or another scientists are using the uh, agar also. In 
my culture, I used to uh, use the gel diet. Uh, one thing that is uh, in MS basal media, glutamine and ascorbic acids are not present in MS composition. So, whenever in the MS I use uh, glutamine and ascorbic acid, uh, then it is known as the um, modified MS basal media okay, or modified hemorrhagic and sports media. Okay. But the basic requirements of MS is the same. Only I will add uh, the uh, glutamine and ascorbic acid for betterment of growth. Now, uh, the physical environment uh, that I follow, uh, uh, the temperature is 23 degree centigrade plus minus 1 moisture content that is uh, 70 to 90 percent humidity is required and uh, a photo period required that is 16 hours light and 8 hours dark. Um, sometimes as per our requirement temperature may be plus minus 1 degree centigrade uh, we can change. Now coming to the different uh, methods of cell and tissue culture. There are several methods. I will just uh, cover some of them in brief. Uh, one is micropropagation, in vitro seed germination, organogenesis, chromatic embryogenesis, zygotic embryo culture, protoplast culture, anther and pollen culture. Now coming to one after another in detail. Okay. This is a slide where I have mentioned the summary of uh, different methods of cell and tissue culture. It is according to Bojani uh, 1968. So, from the parent plant, what we can do, we can do the several methods of mm -hmm. tissue culture we can use from the parent plant. We can choose axillary branching or adventitious branching from which we can go for the shoot differentiation. From uh, whenever shoot differentiation is there, uh, we go for the rooting after rooting. So a whole uh, in vitro plant is regenerated after transplantation, um, then it uh, produces the uh, mature plant. Okay. So uh, now another thing we can do that uh, from the parent plant, we can use the different uh, explant to produce callus. From callus, we can move on to the two different pathways, that is one is cell suspension culture, another one is somatic embryogenesis. From cell suspension Whenever somatic embryos are developed, uh, embryos are germinated to form the plantlet. Uh, after that, then the mature plant is formed. Uh, other than the callus culture, uh, somatic embryogenesis, ax axillary branching culture, adventitious branching, uh, there are another two methods that is for production of haploid plant, we can use anther and pollen culture, and protoplast culture is also there. Now coming to the micropropagation. Before going to the details of micropropagation, just I will give you some idea about uh, micropropagation. Multiplication of genetically identical copies of a plant by asexual method is uh, called clonal propagation. And the plant population that derived from this process is known as clone. In vitro clonal propagation is called micropropagation. Here in vitro means under controlled condition. Plant cells have a characteristic feature that is totipotency, that is regeneration of whole plant from a uh, single experiment. So we are by this totipotency character uh, using the uh, in vitro cell and tissue culture method, we can produce whole plant. G. Morel in 1960 first introduced the term um, that is micropropagation in orchids. So uh, now coming why we use the term micropropagation in uh, that, that is the why we use the term micro because it requires short space, short time, small size propagules are required but the production is at macro level. So many plants we can uh, develop within a short time. So, uh, coming to the different stages of micropropagation, there are uh, five stages of micropropagation. That is stage 0 is the selection of mother plant and its maintenance. Uh, stage 1 is the initiation and the establishment of culture. Stage 2 is the shoot bud multiplication. Then, uh, in case of shoot bud multiplication, we use uh, MS media. Sometimes we have to use the different concentrations of and we use the pH at 5.7. 
the next stage that is the stage 3 is the root induction. In case of root induction, we use MS special media supplemented with different concentrations of oxygen and uh, pH as per required 5.7 or 5.8. Okay. Uh, so now uh, coming to the last stage that is the stage 4 that is the acclimatization. This is a very crucial point uh, if we are reproducing the um, in vitro plant but after the successful acclimatization whenever we are transferring those plants that is the success of plant cell and tissue culture. Now uh, coming to the stage 0 that is the preparation of mother plant. This is the initial stage uh, where micro, uh, this is the initial step of micro propagation. It involves the selection and growth of stock plant for about under controlled conditions. Here, the plant should be given uh, grown in a, a glass house before culture initiation. Uh, adequate water is very requisite and plant should be provided suitable light, uh, temperature and humidity. Now, after stage 0, coming to the stage 1, that is the establishment of culture. In this stage, the initiation and establishment of uh, culture in a suitable media is achieved. Selection of appropriate explant is important. I have mentioned in where I have discussed about the um, explant uh, that the choice of explant is depends upon the um, experiment and it varies also from experiment to experiment. So, after the choice of experiment, experiment explant should be sterilized and uh, washed. Uh, for sterilization, we can use different surface sterilizing chemicals such as sodium hypochlorite, calcium hypochlorite, uh, mercury chloride, 70% alcohol, etc. etc. The combination and concentrations of sterilizing agent and the duration of treatment varies explant to explant. This is a photograph where um, from the explant. In this is the culture initiation and this is the development of uh, shoot. Okay. After um, initiation of culture, um, uh, we are going to the stage 2 that is the shoot multiplication. In this stage, the major activity of micropropagation occurs in a defined culture media. Stage 2 is mainly involves the multiplication of shoot. Here I have um, put it, uh, so many uh, photographs of different uh, pl uh, plant cell and tissue culture or, or different uh, shoot bud multiplication on the different uh, explant. So this is the glycidiza, this is another photographs of Indian glycidiza, these are the different uh, photographs for shoot bud multiplication also. Now uh, here I have uh, mentioned so many uh, shoot bud multiplication photographs. Here in this is the photograph using in our lab there's so many multiplications is there and this is the Lawsonia inanimis plant, this is the mentha plant, this is the um, Bacopa plant and this is the Glycidiza plant. Now after the successful shoot bud multiplication we have to move for the root induction. This stage involves the transfer of shoot to a medium for rapid development of fruit. Now these are the photographs for uh, root Uh, as I have mentioned that uh, stage 4 that is acclimatization is the very important stage for plant cell and tissue culture. It, it is the intermediate step between in vitro culture and field transfer. Okay. Uh, here some difficulties may arise during this transfer that is rapid basic um, Excuse me ma'am. Yes, uh, you please uh, talk a little bit loudly uh, because we are recording everything and it is coming a little bit low. So please raise your voice a little bit. Okay, there is an infection. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, where uh, we were, uh, there are certain difficulties during transfer. That is, uh, rapid desiccation, fungal and bacterial contaminations is also a problem for uh, acclimatization uh, during acclimatization. So. What we can do, uh, we can uh, grow the plants in glass house for two weeks. Plants are potted in a mixture containing NPK fertilizer and some biological protectant and uh, grown in growth chamber. 
another important thing is the use of peat for dust and coarse sand are uh, required for this day. Now, uh, these are the several photographs for uh, acclimatization. Okay, now, this is the last step, that is the field transfer. The, I have mentioned that, that the success of plant cell and tissue culture is the, uh, how much plant we have transferred in field successfully. Uh, in our um, culture, uh, mostly the success rate is better than 80 to 90 percent. Okay, there are several uh, photographs for field transfer. Now, uh, that is cultivar, um, explant and subculture, media composition, on the media composition three important things are there that is salts, carbohydrate and plant growth regulators. In general, uh, uh, young plants with vigorous uh, germination and branching capacity are more suitable for micropropagation. In addition to that, uh, sometimes some growth regulators are required, um, uh, we generally use um, uh, different uh, kinds of cytokinin for shoot pulp multiplication. Similarly, uh, there are several factors that govern the uh, root induction. So, who um, are uh, those? That is cultivar, explant, and subculture method and media composition. Here also, uh, three uh, things are uh, important that is soil concentration, carbohydrate, and plant growth regulator. For efficient in vitro rooting during micropropagation, low concentrations of salt, sometimes we are using uh, half MS or one, one fourth MS, uh, it uh, advantage, uh, advantageous for root induction. Uh, induction of root it is also promoted uh, by the presence of uh, suitable auxin. Uh, uh, upon the auxin, sometimes we can use the 240, sometimes we can use NAA, IBA, IA, etc. Uh, the uh, response of plant uh, depending upon the and varies also species to species. Now coming to the applications of micropropagated plant, uh, that is the high rate of plant propagation within a short period. Another advantage is that the, it can be carried out throughout the year irrespective of the seasonal variations. Further, for many plants that are highly resistant to conventional propagation, micropropagation is the suitable alternative. The small size propagules that are required uh, obtained in the um, uh, micropropagation can be easily stored for the yard as jump plasma storage and transported across international boundaries. Uh, another important application is the production of disease free plant, it is cost effective process. Synthetic seed production is also a very important application for micropropagative plant. Uh, another thing is the genetic transformation and it is also helpful physiological and biochemical as well as molecular studies of plants. Now, there are certain advantages also, uh, production of disease-free plants throughout the season. Uh, this process um, is uh, overcome the seed dormancy and regeneration of plants that are true to time. Uh, and the production of large number of proteins within a short time. Uh, there are so many uh, few disadvantages that are contaminations of culture, browning of media, genetic variability, that is the uh, somatonal variation sometimes may come, a uh, cost factor is also there, sometimes uh, some uh, equipments or so sophisticated facilities are required um, and uh, one thing is that I have mentioned that browning of media is the problematic in case of some woody plants where some venally compounds are secreted due to culture. So, as there is problem, so there is also the way out also it's to prevent those problems I have mentioned earlier uh, for prevention of contamination we have to maintain the proper sterilization method for preventing the oxidative browning we can use the initiation of culture in dark or we can use the some antioxidants like citric acid, ascorbic acid, PVP or we can use activated charcoal. Activated charcoal absorbs the polyphenolic substances. Now, um, uh, beyond this, uh, hyperhydration is also uh, a problematic for hyperhydration. We can use the gelling agent or that is agar or gel right. 
Uh, so to prevent the somaclonal variation, uh, somaclonal variations is mostly occurred in the callus. Uh, we have to subculture um, time to time. Uh, I prefer callus to subculture after 28 days interval. Now uh, another topic of uh, in vitro, uh, well, another topic of cell and tissue cancer that is in vitro cell germination. Uh, these are kept uh, submerged in between 20 solution for 10 minutes. Uh, and followed by the seeds are rinsed, uh, rinsed in thoroughly under running cap water, followed by 0.1 percent of the solution. Um, I have mentioned that 0.1 percent are solution. Sometimes it requires 0.15 percent more. Sometimes it requires along with 0.1 percent microchloride solution. Sometimes 30 seconds, uh, 70 percent alcohol treatment is also required. These are the photographs where uh, it is the um, carrot uh, seedling production in vitro. It is the lasonia in our seedling production in vitro. Now, coming to another method that is the organogenesis. What is meant by organogenesis? Organogenesis is the process of morphogenesis involving the formation of plant organs that is shoot, root, etc. Uh, from the culture of tissue culture method. It is of two types uh, like uh, direct organogenesis and indirect organogenesis. Now, coming to the in general process of organogenesis. Uh, in general, we can use uh, leaves and internodes for organogenesis. Uh, after selection of plant, induction of callus uh, is done, uh, that is MS media supplemented with different concentrations of plant growth regulators. For callus induction, uh, I prefer to uh, maintain the pH at 5.8. Then from the callus, uh, transfer to MS media uh, for root and shoot development. Okay. Now coming to the direct organogenesis. In case of direct organogenesis, the morphogenesis occurs without growing through a callus phase. Okay. That is the direct organogenesis. The term direct adventitious organ formation is also used for the direct organogenesis. Uh, here, one thing we have to mention that uh, for appropriate organogenesis in culture system, exogenous addition of some growth regulators, uh, that is auxin and cytokinin, is required. The concentration of the growth promoting substances depends upon the age and nature of explant we have used beside the uh, growth conditions. In the earlier, this is the photographs where I have used the leaf as the explant from the leaf using BAP 1 mg per liter directly shoots are emerged. Okay. This is the uh, direct organogenesis. Okay. Now coming to the indirect organogenesis. Uh, so when the organogenesis occurs through a callus phase that is regarded as, as the indirect organogenesis. Callus growth can be established from uh, many explants, uh, but in case of, of uh, in the photograph I have mentioned, uh, those callus may mo mostly from the leaves or uh, internodes. But, but other uh, explant can be used also. So these are the photographs of this is the uh, photographs of callus from the callus. From the callus, uh, these are the shoot emergence. Uh, this is this is also a uh, shoot emergence. These are the photographs for indirect organogenesis. Okay. Now mm, uh, the photographs 2E and 2D are the different. Uh, that is, these are the photographs for sizar um, indirect organogenesis and other remaining photographs are the back open indirect organogenesis. Now, uh, so from this, what we can say that by varying the concentrations of oxygen and cytokinins, in vitro organogenesis can be manipulated. Uh, how? Uh, low oxygen and low cytokinin concentration with, will induce callus formation. Low oxygen and high cytokinin concentration will promote shoot organogenesis from callus and high oxygen and low cytokinin concentration will induce root formation. 
this is a pictorial uh, representation that is from a parent plant we, we have used the uh, leaf from uh, explant extracts are chopped then uh, I, for the direct organization directly from the leaf to uh, plant is developed and from for the indirect organization callus phase is also there from the callus shoot and root formation is also there now coming to another method of um, cell and tissue culture that is the somatic embryogenesis. Somatic embryogenesis is a process by which somatic cells or tissue including haploid cells are uh, developed into differentiated uh, embryos and to regenerate the plants. Steve Watt in 1958 first introduced the term Embryogenesis rain art produce embryos from callus in carrot or through suspension culture. Now, um, in continuation with the previous slide, that uh, the process of regeneration of embryos from somatic cell, tissue, or organ is regarded as the somatic or asexual embryogenesis. Uh, in a general sense, uh, when the term somatic embryo is used, it implies that it is formed from the somatic tissue under in vitro conditions. Somatic embryos are structurally similar to zygotic embryo, except uh, somatic embryo do not have the uh, suspension and without any endospan. Okay. Uh, so, um, here, in case of somatic embryogenesis, there are two routes, either direct somatic embryogenesis or indirect somatic embryogenesis. Now, uh, somatic embryogenesis, whatever direct or indirect, can be carried out on a, a wide range of media. For somatic embryogenesis, we can use MS media, we can use Weitz media, etc. The addition of um, L-glutamine uh, promotes the embryogenesis. The presence of auxin at the beginning, uh, like a 2,4-D, is uh, essential for embryo initiation. It is found in uh, so many plants. So it is evident from so many plants. Uh, on a low concentration or no auxin concentration uh, or uh, withdrawing the auxin, the embryogenic clumps develop into mature embryos. So for the induction of embryo, for the maturation of embryo, withdrawal of em uh, auxin or the very low concentration of auxin is required. Now this is the normal stages of embryogenesis that is after fertilization of um, egg, uh, then uh, uh, zygote is formed and zygote after differentiation and re re division after redivision, uh, there is uh, several changes occur that forms a um, embryo, that from the embryo that your plant is formed. This, this is the in general uh, our conventional idea. Okay, now coming to the direct somatic embryogenesis. Uh, as I have mentioned that in case of direct somatic embryogenesis, uh, uh, dif different stages of somatic embryo are occurred without any callus phase. So when the somatic embryos develop directly on the excised plant, that is X plant, without undergoing callus formation, it is regarded as the um, direct somatic embryogenesis. Uh, this is possible due to presence of some cell that is PE that is a pre-embryonic determined cell found in some tissues of plant. The characteristic feature of direct somatic embryogenesis is it avoids the possibility of introducing somatonal variation. In case of um, uh, uh, micropropagation, one uh, problem I have mentioned that uh, sometimes somatonal variations is also there. Uh, for that, we have to subculture uh, regularly uh, at 28 days interval. So, uh, whenever we are going for the direct somatic embryogenesis, there is a less chance for somatonal variations. Now coming to the indirect somatic embryogenesis. In indirect somatic embryogenesis, the cells from X plant are made to proliferate, uh, that is the formation of callus. Uh, callus may be in solid phase or uh, we can use the suspension culture also for uh, somatic embryogenesis development uh, indirectly. Uh, here also the cells are known as 
induced embryogenic determined, uh, determinant cell that is IEDC uh, that are formed in the cell suspension can form the somatic embryo. Indirect somatic embryogenesis is made possible by the presence of growth regulators. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier that uh, the presence of 2,4-D is very much required at the earlier stages. Okay. And uh, suitable environmental conditions is also required. Uh, indirect somatic embryogenesis is commercially very attractive since a large number of embryos can be generated in a small volume of cultured media, the somatic embryos so formed are synchronous and with good regeneration capability also. Now, uh, I have just, uh, I will mention, there are several types of embryos, that is, uh, one is zygotic embryo, that is, uh, the embryo formed uh, by fertilization of egg, that, after form, that is the formation of zygote followed by differentiation of the embryo and uh, from the embryo, the plant is formed. Another thing is the non-zygotic embryo. Uh, of non-zygotic embryo, there are somatic embryos, parthenocarpic embryos, or androgenic embryos. Now, uh, the general process for somatic embryogenesis is first selection of extract. In my tissue culture experiment, I have used uh, leaf and intercourse. Uh, the extract responses varies uh, experiment or species to species because in case of uh, Saisal, I have found that internode is the best explant for uh, somatic embryogenesis. In case of Bacopa moneri, I have found that this explant is the best res uh, response explant. Okay, after selection of explant, induction of uh, calum that is uh, MS media supplemented with hormone. I have not mentioned what type of hormone because I have uh, seen that there are so many uh, ex uh, hormones that uh, concentration and combination varies plant to plant. And that then uh, after callus induction, different stages of somatic embryo development occur. Uh, then from the somatic embryo development, uh, plantlets are formed. For plantlet formation, it is uh, seen that a very low concentration of cytokinin, uh, like kinetin at pH 7, it is very helpful. So this is a general structure that uh, from a cell, uh, cell plant that is callus is formed, uh, callus is induced to form different stages of somatic embryo. I will, I am coming with the different stages of somatic embryo. From the different stages of somatic embryo, we can uh, form the in the plantlets also. Now, uh, different stages of somatic embryo. Uh, there are several stages. Uh, first one is the globular stage, uh, second one is the heart shaped stage, then torpedo stage, then bipolar stage. Uh, globular stage is uh, where the small globules or spherical structures, uh, generally pale yellow colored structures, are found. Um, from the um, globular stage, just uh, a little bit elongated and with three lobe structures. Uh, the central depression, depression uh, it is known as uh, heart shaped stage. After the heart shaped stage, next stage is the torpedo stage. This structure re resembles the elongated heart, um, large and pale in color. Now, uh, the uh, next and mature stage of the somatic embryo development is the bipolar stage. Here, further elongation of torpedo shaped stage gives rise to bipolar stage with define root and shoot very step that will uh, give rise to complete plant. In the next um, slide, I will, uh, okay, here uh, I am showing some of the embryogenic callus. Okay. So from this callus, there are so many uh, structures found that is globular stage, heart shaped stage, torpedo stage and bipolar stage. Okay, now coming to the different stages. Okay. In the arrow mark, I have mentioned that this is the globular stage, this is the heart shaped stage, this is the torpedo, shape st in, in, uh, torpedo stage and this is the bipolar stage from this, this kind of structure that is the whole plant it can be regenerated. Okay. So, uh, this is the examples uh, that I have the photographs is the uh, somatic embryogenesis in Bacopa monary. 
Okay, uh, these structures, whenever we have found, uh, we have uh, analyzed under the scanning electron microscope, a single cell, how it looks like, I have presented here, Th this is the uh, single globular stage, uh, then this is the um, heart shaped stage, and is, it is the elongated heart, that is torpedo, followed by bipolar stage. Okay. So, now, uh, there are, I have mentioned in earlier slides that there are several factors that govern the somatic endogenesis, of which a characteristic and choice of explant is very important. Um, uh, generally, we use young and juvenile explant to produce uh, more somatic embryos that, than that of older explant. Okay. As a further complexity, different explant tissue from the same mother plant produces embryogenic callus at different frequencies. Now other thing is the auxin, I have mentioned that presence of auxin at the induction stage is very prerequisite uh, and cytokinin uh, for maturation and plant dead formation, uh, low concentration of cytokinin is also required. Uh, sometimes it is uh, noted that ABA has uh, some inhibitory roles also. Um, uh, nitrogen source is very important, uh, in carrot it is found that uh, Ammonium uh, ion is a uh, uh, promoting uh, activity. So, other than this, a uh, high K plus level and low dissolved O2 level prevents the somatic embryo regeneration also. Now, coming to the what are the different advantages of somatic embryo It is observable that it is uh, various culture conditions can be controlled, high propagation rate, the germplasm conservation is also an advantage for somatic embryogenesis. It is a liver saving process and it also eliminates the uh, different diseases and viruses. Now, uh, here also the two to three disadvantages because uh, somatic embryogenesis is confined to a few species. The somatic embryos so sometimes may show the very poor germination uh, because of their physiological and biochemical um, maturity. Um, that's why I have been tell you, uh, told that um, the concentration and combination of user plant growth regulators is very important for Instability of culture cells uh, in long term cultures is a major limitation in commercial exploitation and mass propagation of somatic embryogenesis. That's why we, um, after 28 days interval, we are subculturing the callus. Okay. Now, in continuation with the somatic embryogenesis, another term that is artificial seeds are developed um, from the somatic uh, artificial seeds can be uh, produced by the encapsulation of somatic embryos. So, whenever we are talking about the artificial seeds, so our first thing is the to induction of somatic embryos. The embryos coated with sodium alginate and nutrient solutions are dipped in calcium chloride solution. The calcium ions uh, induces rapid cross-linking with uh, sodium alginate that produces a small gel beads, each containing a encapsulated embryo. This is that is the encapsulated embryo, we can call it the artificial seed, can be maintained um, in a visible state uh, till they are planted. This is a uh, pictorial representation of our artificial seed, how it looks like. And so, uh, based on the techniques, uh, we can categorize the formation of artificial seed by two ways, that is desiccated synthetic seed and hydrated synthetic seed. In case of a desiccated synthetic seed, we use polyoxyethylene glycol for encapsulation. This type of encapsulation uh, or this type of synthetic seed is produced in desiccation tolerance plant species. Whereas hydrated synthetic seeds are mostly uh, used uh, here. Um, hydrated synthetic seeds are produced by encapsulating the somatic embryos in hydrogels. Uh, we can use different uh, types of hydrogels like sodium alginate, potassium alginate, carrageenan, sodium pectate, um, sodium alginate, which is also. Now, uh, for the basic requirements for artificial seed production, are the 
inexpensive production of large number of high quality smart link embryos then the encapsulation and coating uh, after encapsulation commercialization of synthetic seeds are mm, there now uh, the methods for artificial seed uh, development that is the encapsulation that is uh, dropping method um, the somatic embryos are dipped in hydrogel this step is in uh, encapsulate the somatic embryos uh, there are several hydrogels i have mentioned that are uh, alginate sodium alginate agar etc okay uh, somatic embryos are dipped in those solutions uh, these coated beads are added one by one into a complex solution flux that kept in magnetic stirrer where uh, it is kept for 20 to 30 minutes within that time and the encapsulation is completed okay this is a pictorial representation of, um, of how the somatic embryos are encapsulated to form the uh, synthetic seed after encapsulation synthetic seeds are ready Okay. Another thing is the uh, molding method. Uh, the, here we can use uh, the temperature dependent gel that is uh, gel right and agar cells get coated with the gel at lowering of the temperature. Okay. So the, for artificial seed production in general steps are the first one is the establishment of somatic embryogenesis, then mature somatic embryo uh, production, synchronization of somatic embryo, uh, then mass production of somatic embryo, or standardization of encapsulation after standardization. Another thing is the artificial endosperm. As I have mentioned that uh, in uh, somatic embryo there is no endosperm. So sometimes we need to artificial in this form. Uh, now after the completion of this process that is the mass production of these are then the greenhouse and field energy plant. Okay. So one time thing I have mentioned that artificial endosperm. It is this is nothing but the uh, sometimes somatic as somatic embryos lack seed coat is testa and endosperm that provide protection and nutrition for zygotic embryos in uh, developing seed uh, to augment these uh, deficiencies sometimes we have to add the nutrients growth regulators to the encapsulated matrix um, uh, these uh, additions uh, result in the increase in efficiency of germination and viability of encapsulated embryos these synthetic seeds can be stored for a longer period uh, for even for up, uh, from six months sometimes we have found that 52 up to 52 months uh, this can be uh, used okay uh, uh, sometimes uh, this type of so much, uh, artificial endosperm can stored uh, at 40 degrees centigrade also okay now uh, sometimes we use uh, adjuvant uh, for the those sometimes uh, as i have mentioned that there is no endosperm uh, some due uh, to prevent the embryo from desiccation and mechanical injury a uh, number of useful materials such as nutrients fungicides pesticides um, antibiotics uh, uh, may use incorporation of activated charcoal it is seen that improves improves the conversion and vigor of the encapsulated somatic embryo that retains the nutrient within the hydrogel capsule and slowly release them to the growing embryo. So, at, uh, use of our activated charcoal is very important for as the actual. Now, uh, coming to the potential uses for um, artificial seed, it redu reduces the cost, direct greenhouse and field uh, delivery of elite and select genotype, large scale production of monoculture. It can be um, used, uh, can be handled as seeds using conventional planting equipment. It can be produced throughout the year. Conservation of germplasm is very important because we can uh, store the um, artificial seed uh, for a longer time large scale production of identical embryos in uh, within a short time okay now coming to zygotic embryo culture before going to the zygotic embryo culture just i will give you a brief idea about what is embryo as you all know a seed plant uh, embryo is a part of, of seed um, consisting of a precursor tissue for the leaves stem 
and loot, uh, as well as one or more cartilages. The young sporophyte of a seed plant usually comprises a rudimentary plant with primitive anaerobic and cartilages. So, coming to the embryo culture, embryo culture developed from the need to rescue embryo that we call it the uh, embryo rescue. further uh, developed for the production of plants from embryo uh, developed by the system. Now, zygotic uh, embryo is formed following the double fertilization of the embryo, as you all know. Zygotic embryo culture is the aseptic isolation and growth of uh, sexually reproduced embryo under in uh, coming to the matured embryo culture, it is the culture of uh, matured embryo derived from the live seeds. Uh, this type of uh, culture is done when embryos do not survive in vivo or become dormant for a longer period. That's why we are uh, culturing the matured embryo. Um, the, this culture is done to eliminate the inhibition of seed germination. That is the uh, one of the major problems, that is seed dormancy is the major problem for a seed. These are the some photographs for zygotic embryo culture. Okay, now coming to the uh, factors that also govern the um, zygotic embryo culture. These are the uh, nutritional requirements, carbohydrates, uh, mostly for zygotic embryo culture. Sucrose is commonly used as the uh, carbohydrate source. Sometimes we can use coconut milk or tomato juice for the um, natural plant extent for uh, activation of this type of culture. Uh, nitrogen and vitamin source, casein hydrolyzed, we can use and we can use uh, gibberellic acid for as the growth rate. Uh, now coming to the application of uh, zygotic embryo culture, there are several applications uh, like uh, to overcome the dormancy and shortening of the breeding cycle, rapid seed viability test, production of rare plants, floral propagation also. Now this is a very basic slide that I have mentioned that there are certain the differences that is zygotic embryogenesis and somatic embryogenesis. The main thing I have uh, already mentioned that somatic embryo do not possess the suspension and uh, do, uh, it do not have in the um, endosperm. That's why uh, we have to put the uh, nourishment artificial. So. Uh, after all these things, uh, coming to the somatic cell hybridization. Um, here, as we all know, that the conventional method to improve the characteristics of cultivated plants for years has been sexual hybridization. Uh, but the major limitation of sexual hybridization, in the, in hybridization is that it can be performed within a plant species or very closely related species. The species varies for plant improvement encountered in sexual hybridization that can be overcome by somatic cell fusion um, for production of viable hybrids. Somatic hybridization broadly involves in the uh, fusion of isolated protoplasts that uh, after certain development constitution and protoplast fusion uh, is a wonderful approach to overcome sexual incompatibility between different okay, So what is uh, somatic cell hybridization? That is the development of hybrid plants through the fusion of somatic protoplast of two different plant species or varieties is called the uh, somatic hybridization. This is a non-conventional genetic procedure uh, that occurs under uh, in vitro condition that is the formation of heterocarion or to form the hybrid plant. Okay. Um, before going to the details of protoplast culture and etc., just I will give you an idea that is what is protoplast. Protoplast is a, uh, known, also known as a naked cell that is a cell without pro uh, cell wall. So, a cell without cell wall is known as protoplast. These are the photographs for protoplast. Hans Stein first uh, proposed this term protoplast. Now, uh, isolated, uh, the isolation of protoplast was first achieved by Clark Hall. Uh, E.C. Cocking first uh, uh, time isolated the protoplast from the plant tissues. Uh, first achievement of protoplast fusion was uh, uh, undergoes by power in 1970. 
So coming to the major points that are related to somatic hybridization, that is it involves somatic cell. Tissue culture is very essential for somatic uh, hybridization. Equal contribution of cytoplasm, it overcomes the barrier of cross incompatibility. Novel uh, combination of genes from uh, unrelated species that can be uh, an important factor for uh, somatic hybridization. Now, after somatic hybridization, we can uh, uh, found heterocarrion formation that is the that involves the fusion of two different cells uh, to produce a hybrid that is heterocarrion or fusion of uh, sometimes fusion produces homocarrion where two uh, parental cells come from the same species. This is a pictorial representation for um, somatic cell fusion. So, this is the in general structure that is protoplast are isolated uh, then from two different species or genera from this uh, isolated protoplast then uh, you can uh, form the somatic hybrid after somatic uh, hybridization then plant cells are formed. Now, um, coming to the different uh, types, uh, based on the taxonomic relationship, uh, somatic um, uh, hybridization can be interspecific, intergeneric and intertribal. Hybrids between two different species of the same genus is the interspecific, uh, where hybrids between two different genera is the intergeneric and uh, hybrids between uh, two um, plants of two different tribes is the intertribal. Uh, hybridic hybridization and coming to the, um, another type that is based on the contribution of chromosome it can be uh, symmetric uh, it can be asymmetric or cyclic i will uh, go for the cyclic in details uh, later so uh, this is the uh, very uh, short uh, representation that is uh, the for somatic hybridization technique first one is the isolation of protoplast second one is the fusion of protoplast third one is the identity of somatic hybrid, then culture, then regeneration. Okay. Now, first coming to the um, uh, isolation of protoplast, we can isolate protoplast by mechanical method or uh, enzymatic method. But in general, we follow the uh, enzymatic method. In mechanical method, from the plant uh, uh, tissue, first plasmolysis is occurred uh, under microscopic observation, cutting the cell wall with a knife, uh, then release of protoplast uh, and collection of protoplast. Uh, but uh, in my mechanical method of uh, protoplast isolation, there are several limitations that is use of the cells like onion, pulse skin, radish, and a bit uh, low yield of protoplast laborious and tedious process, low protoplast variability. As there are several limitations for mechanical isolation of protoplast, we we'll go for the um, enzymatic method. Under enzymatic method, there are two steps, either one step method or two step method. So we can follow any one of the pathways. In case of one step method, we add pectinase and cellulose we, we go for the uh, prepare a mixture of uh, pectinase and cellulose. Uh, then, so after uh, some digestion incubation period, uh, isolated protoplast are there. In case of two step process, first we use the pectinase after release of uh, isolated cell, then we follow uh, and then we go for the cellulose digestion. Uh, so, after that, uh, protoplast are released. In general, uh, mostly we follow the one-step method where pectinase and cellulose are there uh, using uh, in a same container. So there are several advantages for enzymatic isolation of protoplast um, because uh, from several tissues we can uh, um, isolate the protoplast. It is high yielding, easy to perform, and more viability. Now, uh, protoplast purification is the uh, uh, prerequisite for protoplast culture. Uh, after isolation of protoplast, uh, by the centrifugation method, we can isolate the protoplast uh, and protoplast are maintained or uh, uh, kept in the mannitol solution that is the osmoticum. Okay. Now coming to the protoplast fusion, for protoplast fusion can be uh, within the species that is interspecific, between species that is interspecific and within genus that is intrageneric or intergeneric. The number of methods for protoplast fusion uh, are there. Uh, now I am going to the different methods of protoplast fusion. Uh, 
uh, here are also spontaneous fusion is there and induced fusion is there. Uh, the rate of spontaneous fusion is very uh, less uh, where uh, for the rate of protoplas fusion in case of induced fusion is very high. So that's why we are using the induced fusion method. Under spontaneous fusion, it may be interspecies space or it may be intergeneric. For induced fusion, we can use some chemicals that is chemo fusion, we can use some mechanical fusion method or we can follow the electro fusion method. In general, the mechanism of fusion that uh, uh, is first activation, then plasma membrane fusion, then now, as I have mentioned, that uh, fusion can be of interspecific or interspecific. Now, uh, this is a schematic representation of um, uh, protoplast fusion. Uh, first one here, we can use high concentration of calcium ion. Uh, we can use PEG uh, for uh, protoplast fusion. PEG is mostly used, or we can use electric fusion where first the then uh, fusion is occurred. Now this is a photograph for uh, protoplast fusion. Now this is also the um, photographs for protoplast fusion. Okay. Now uh, after protoplast fusion there are several methods to identify and select uh, by uh, visualizing several characters like um, pigmentation, cytoplasmic markers, use of FITC, RITC and presence of chloroplast that are the markers for identity. Uh, after protoplast uh, culture, the regeneration is uh, important. Plants are induced to regenerate from hybrid callus. Uh, hybrid cells are cultured on a sterile media. Uh, mostly we prefer to culture in petri dishes rather than culture tube or jam bottle. Uh, the temperature here uh, we follow 25 degree centigrade. And another thing from the uh, callus, we go for the embryogenesis and uh, as I have already mentioned the different stages of embryogenesis by controlling the hormones, then from the hybrid, uh, uh, from those uh, hybrid strands can be formed. Okay, now, uh, cell wall regeneration is another important aspect for the plant um, uh, protoplast. Uh, we can uh, find the use of uh, Colprofluor, iodide, etc. Different stains can be used for visualizing the cell wall formation. Okay. Now there are several advantages for somatic hybridization. That is production of novel, interspecific, and intergenetic hybrid production of fertile diploid, transfer of different uh, genes like disease resistance, abiotic stress resistance, herbicide resistance, etc. Now, production of uh, heterogeneous lines uh, in the same single species studies on uh, on the field of plasma gene production of unique hybrids of the cytoplasm. This is a uh, common photograph that is the uh, one example for Disadvantages, so just I will mention uh, sometimes poor regeneration of a uh, hybrid non viability of fusion products, non, uh, it is not su uh, successful at all in all plant. Um, production of unfavorable hybrid, lack of efficient method for protoplast fusion and protoplast culture, uh, efficient, knowledgeable uh, manpower is very required. Okay, now coming to the hybrid. In continuation with the uh, protoplast fusion, one thing I have mentioned that plants or cells which containing nucleus of one species but cytoplasm of both the parents is known as hybrid. Hybrid means cytoplasmic hybrid. It involves the fusion of two protoplasts uh, where uh, and chromosome of one uh, parent. Uh, how uh, it can be achieved? Suppression of nuclear genome during fusion, uh, use of gamma ray X-ray and selection of those fusion products that have only the, the extranuclear genomes so as the donor. Now this is a uh, photograph for cybitization that is uh, a protoplast A and protoplast B are the two different protoplasts after uh, cybit formation uh, from that cybit new mature plant can be formed. Okay, 
what are those benefits? The transfer of plasma genes of one species to nuclear background uh, to another species, production of wide range of genetic variations useful for sterile plants, mitochondrial genes can uh, also combine with chloroplast gene of uh, another species. Plants like uh, medicinal plants, crop plants, rare plants, well, many in case of many other plants, it is also induced. Now coming to the last topic of my uh, different methods of culture that is the haploid culture. Here in case of haploid culture, uh, it is a in vitro technique used for production of haploid plants. Blackesley first introduced the term indatura plant. Uh, haploid plants can be obtained from either anther culture or the pollen culture. Now uh, it, it is the uh, just pictorial representation of anther culture technique that is from the uh, any parent plant, uh, flowers, uh, buds are um, selection of flower buds, then within the laminar bark, so uh, after surface sterilization, um, uh, from anthers are in, uh, removed. Uh, after removal of the uh, anther, that is the filaments are also removed, uh, anthers are cultured in the petri dish. Uh, for anther culture, we can follow either organogenesis or embryogenesis. So, thus the formation of haploid plants is um, formed. Now, uh, another process for uh, haploid uh, culture that is the pollen culture. Um, here, uh, we just use the pollen uh, cells uh, that is after removal of uh, filament that is whenever we are choosing those anther portion, uh, then uh, are gently crush those anthers with the glass rod, then filter the pollen, uh, then after centrifugation, collection of uh, uh, pollen suspension. This pollen suspension is used for callus formation from this callus after embryogenesis a uh, plantlet is formed. So now coming to the applications of uh, haploid culture, there are several applications like development of homozygous lined, uh, induction of mutations, induction of disease resistant plant, generation of exclusive male plant, uh, production of um, insect resistance plant. There are several uh, applications of haploid cultures. Now, uh, there are, uh, may be a question that is all the regenerated plants whether these are genetically stable or not. To uh, answer this question, uh, we have to, um, so that is the uh, study of genetic stability of regenerated plants. We generally follow after uh, micropropagation or any other tissue culture methods when we um, take the in vitro plant, first we follow the chromosome analysis, somatic chromosome analysis, then biochemical analysis and molecular analysis. Here I have mentioned just only the um, somatic chromosome uh, plates that are the, these are these two are the uh, Lawsonia inarmis uh, in vivo and in vitro. So there is a genetic stability because all, this, all these cases I have found that there is a constancy in chromosome number in case of in vivo and in case of in vitro plant. This is the um, uh, chromosome uh, study of in vivo and in vitro for uh, uh, Tabanimantara coronaria dwarf variety. Dwarf variety, but uh, the third one is the, uh, the tissue culture grown uh, plant that is in vivo and in vitro uh, somatic chromosome study in case of Tabani Montana coronaria wild type. Uh, these uh, black and white figures are uh, the chromosome study for from Bacopamoneri and these uh, two are the um, chromosome study from uh, different species of mentha in vitro and in vivo. Where in all cases I have found there is a genetic stability because the twin number and karyotype formula and karyotype um, and the chromosome morphology remain same which indicates the um, genetic stability at chromosomal level. Now, uh, we can follow the biochemical method that is uh, gel electrophoresis method. Uh, in case of uh, Dawsonia inanimis, in case of Bacopa, in case of uh, um, Saisa, we have found that, uh, and Mentha, we have found that there is a bending pattern is similar. Uh, so, the regenerates can be uh, called as the stable regenerates at biochemical level. Uh, there are also molecular method that is we can uh, um, uh, follow the ISSR or ITS analysis where uh, I have found that in our culture uh, those in vitro plants regenerated by us, um, uh, those are genetically stable. Now uh, coming to the uh, last part of my uh, today's presentation that is the tissue culture and conservation. 
ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ನಾವು ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಹೌ ಟಿಶ್ಯೂ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಹೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ವಿತ್ ಟು ಟಿಶ್ಯೂ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಕವರ್ಸ್ ದ ವೈಡ್ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಸ್ಟೆರೈಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ದ ಪೊಟೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟಿಶ್ಯೂ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೈ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ರೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾಫ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆರ್ಟಿಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಮೇಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಸುಲೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೊಮಾಟಿಕ್ ಎಂಬ್ರಾಯಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಎಂಬ್ರಾಯಲ್ಸ್ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋಡಿಯಂ ಆಲ್ಜಿನೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯನ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಪ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಸಿಯಂ ಕ್ಲೋರೈಡ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ can be maintained for a longer time in vitro storage technique include uh, sometimes we follow short term techniques or sometimes we follow the long term storage techniques plant tissue for storage um, can be stored by cryopreservation or method also now uh, what are the um, uh, so chat for the use of tissue culture for storage of uh, for conservation that is excision of tissue from parent then tissue culture storage by appropriate method recovery of healthy culture from storage phase then regeneration of whole plant and evaluation of genetic stability now uh, from all this uh, i can conclude that the protocol for in vitro regeneration was effective and easier there are several methods for um, in vitro regeneration rapid production and disease free and production within a short time is a very uh, applicable method and um, it is helpful for um, ex situ conservation also mm, these are the some references i have, I have followed so many references for this um, now i would like to um, express my heartfelt thanks to the organizing team i would like to express my sincere gratitude to the um, principal and whole college authority of dr kanailal bhattacharya college for their inspiration support and encouragement my sincere thanks and appreciation to all my teachers for their valuable suggestions that helped to conduct my research work thank you all for hearing so thank you dr samanto for sharing your valuable knowledge on tissue culture with all the participants of this virtual meeting room this is a very good presentation for a basics of tissue culture thank you again now the question and answer session if any question participants you can write in the chat box no question in the chat box hello 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 oh madam madam you are asking question direct to dibu samanta yeah 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 good evening okay, ma'am okay. thank okay. you your session was i mean your lecture was very nice uh, i just thank want you. to ask about um, onion uh, how to uh, prepare or how to culture the onion cells i want to prepare the cell suspension culture uh, i tried for, my level best but i okay. could not do that uh, just uh, of what i, I have for some other experiment actually okay okay uh, uh, what i have followed that from the onion ball first you can make a callus onion callus okay? using 240 okay. and na okay it is a very important uh, what what, what? Uh, please, please repeat please repeat 240 and naa this two okay are 240 and naa okay so you can first of um, induce the callus formation from the onion bud okay then from the callus formation we can move uh, you can move on to any sort of experiment first you need is the callus formation yeah callus formation till that i reached okay but okay. actually after that how to go to get uh, cell suspension that uh, i tried my level best for 6 months i tried but uh, i am i am unable to get so i am asking uh, i have to uh, uh, perform the suspension culture in case of bacopa in case of sizar in case of mintha but uh, okay which medium did you use okay. for that uh, 
third uh, cell suspension culture for uh, you can uh, first you have to grow the cells under semi solid condition from that uh -huh. after 28 days you can use the liquid uh -huh. media sometimes for liquid media what you can do the interval of um, uh, changes that is subculture we can shorten that is after 15 days we can uh, you can uh, Subculture. Change it, right. But okay. uh, then, is, it, is it there that uh, you have to use something special in liquid medium? Uh, sometimes, uh, you can use the changes of com concentration and combination of hormones. Um, if you are using 240, okay. 1 okay. mg per liter, you, you can use in a indoor condition or vice versa. Okay, okay. And, and uh, is combination, that, uh, and combination and concentration of uh, hormones is a uh, very important because I have mentioned in uh, our uh, organogenesis that is we have mm. used the BAP5 for callus as we all know uh, is huh. BAP is for uh, required for uh, shoot uh, development but huh. uh, we have huh. Uh, huh. amazing uh, results that uh, okay but the basic medium will be MS medium only na? Uh, okay the basic but, but you can use the glutamine and ascorbic acid 1 ml per okay. liter okay. Uh, glutamine and ascorbic acid you mean to say that I have to use in combination, right? Oh. No, it is standard for 100 ml MS media. Uh, we uh -huh. you can use 1 ml of uh -huh. glutamine and 1 ml of uh, ascorbic acid for 100 ml okay. of media. Okay, so, so then I will get cell suspension uh, culture, uh, right? It's a very good uh, for healthy production of the. Okay, okay, thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You can try, okay? Ha uh ha, -huh. sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello, I am Alokanath Bhattacharji. Okay. Hello. Yes, Hello. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Kasti, I only mm. my uh, thanks for the excellent presentation. Uh, my yes, question in this respect is that uh, these are all you have stated our laboratory uh, laboratory uh, development of tissue cultured products but from where near Kolkata we will have the uh, tissue cultured plants for commercial propagation okay, for commercial propagation we are not using the commercial for commercial propagation mm -hmm. but we you can uh, contact with any horticultural institution okay in uh, I know uh, in case of in any horticulture institution, there is a tissue culture uh, set up. Uh, so you can contact with the any horticultural institution. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, you may try. Good evening, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I am Dr. Gayatri from my National University. Uh, I would like to know how to control the contaminations that is coming in the sugar culture. Okay. Okay. I have one sentence I have mentioned that proper sterilization is very important for uh, for the um, contamination prevention of contamination. Uh, so so far we have used the uh, uh, suppose you are using one per point one percent HCl to solution. We all are using 0.1% HGC2 solution, but uh, the difference lies that we are, uh, someone is uh, washing those uh, um, seeds or explant with the 100 ml of water. I, but I follow that after sterilization, for several times, you have to wash those uh, sterilizing agents. And all the work uh, starting from preparation of HCL2 solution is under the laminary condition. Okay, I follow the just a 0.1% HCL2 solution. I also uh, prepare uh, in the laminary airflow, in front of the laminary airflow. Okay. Or uh, you just choice of explant, uh, you just, you may um, collect the explant from Starting your culture for some days, you can keep those explant in the greenhouse. That con uh, that uh, the, the quality of explant is much better. Okay. We can we can follow this. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Gayatri Madam, for taking part in this interactive session. And uh, thank I think you, ma'am. It's actually an excellent session. Nice yes. photographs. All tissue culture photographs, it was excellent. Thank you, ma'am. Deepu, ma'am, thank you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. So, thanks to Deepu Samanto, madam, again. Now, most of the participants are well known to us uh, as regular participants. Thanks to all of you again for participating and making this webinar a grand success. Here we have Dr. Bidana Chha, retired principal, professors like Dr. Bindu, Dr. Yun Bam, Dr. Gaiti Madam, Dr. Boishali Madam, Dr. Nibhita Madam, Dr. Rajini Madam, and our next day's respected speaker, Dr. Nandini Madam, and many more. Thanks to all of you. Now we can conclude today's program. Uh, I think no more questions in anyone's mind. So thank you again to all of you. And uh, thanks to Dr. Deepu Samanto for your excellent presentation. And thanks for, uh, my, uh, for, thanks for taking uh, this interactive uh, part in this interview session and uh, giving all the answers to the um, question, uh, to, to all the questions, and uh, thanks to you, to the Bushamanta again, and good night to all, and we are concluding the program officially. Thank you, ma'am.